What is going on everybody? It's your boy G with Supreme Drone Services. Today I'm showing you how to use PC Master Pro. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it is the uh, pre-processing software for Recepi LiDAR payloads. Uh, let's get started. Here we've got our project folder. Uh, inside our project folder, we have this Recepi folder. That's the raw data from our LiDAR payload. We've got our base coordinates here in lat long ellipsoidal height, and then our control and state plane. And then we have a Rhinox folder. This has our, um, this is the static we logged during our LiDAR flight uh, from our base station. So first thing you want to do, come into this uh, Rhinox folder and um, then come into the Recepi folder and then the data folder. We're going to drag and drop these Rhinox files into the data folder. Uh, once this has been done, we can go back to that main folder. We're going to open up our uh, base coordinates here in that long ellipsoidal height. And then we're going to go into the Recepi folder. And then here we've got a PPK file. It's a PC Master Pro project file. We're going to double click on this file. Um, this will pull up the PC Master. Um, let me move this over here for you guys. Mm -mm. Okay, antenna offset guess. Um, I fly an M350. My antenna is not in a fixed location, so we're going to leave this at zero. Um, if your antenna is in a fixed location, you can memorize these numbers, and it'll save you a little bit of time on processing. Um, but yeah, mine's not in a fixed location. Leave uh, all of this at zero. Um, the software will figure out the best antenna location for you. Okay, now it is asking for our base coordinates. So we are going to copy and paste our uh, base coordinates over. Um, you can see here I'm leaving off that last digit. PC Master only accepts a certain uh, number of decimals. So it won't accept that last number. Um, and then ellipsoidal height. Uh, we're going to uncheck uh, this here, and then we're going to change this to one hertz. Um, we do any sort of uh, vertical shift, small vertical shift. We'll do that in our post-processing software. So we've got our base coordinates, lat, long, ellipsoidal height, uh, sampling rate, one hertz, and then we're going to press OK. OK, I'm going to let this process. I'll let you guys watch the, the whole um, routine. I'm going to come back when this is done. All right, let's continue. Um, so by default, um, the entire trajectory is selected. Um, we don't want that. We do not want the to and from in the figure eight uh, in our data set. So we're going to come up here in the top left, LiDAR tools, paths. Uh, we're going to remove this default path, and then we're going to select our own. To navigate, uh, you hold control and left click to move around. Um, you scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Um, and so we're going to right click, start selection here. I zoom back out, hold control, click to move around, zoom back in here, and then we'll right click, finish selection. Okay, now you can see the uh, to and from in the figure eight is no longer highlighted. Um, that means that data will not be processed, which is exactly what we want. Uh, let's go back up here to the top left, LiDAR tools, and then we're gonna go to cloud filters. Um, rotation angle, so this is the FOV by default. Uh, it's at 90 degrees, which is the recommended uh, by the manufacturer. So we're going to leave this at 90 um, distance to the range gate. Um, we flew this site at about uh, 60 meters, I believe. So we'll, we'll do a 100 meter range gate. Um, and when you're doing the range gate, you always want to make sure you look at the bottom of your data set and make sure you're not um, leaving out any data. So let's do a... Uh, 50 meters, so you can see here, obviously, uh, if your range gate is uh, too aggressive, you're going to be losing, uh, you're going to be missing data. So um, let's do 60. You can see we've still got some gaps here. Um, I know that the XT32 has very good data up to 100 meters, and I've seen data sets where it can actually do do good even past 100 meters, but for my use case, 100 meters is great. And um, FOV 90 degrees, once that is done, um, we're, we're completed with the workflow. All, all we need to do is export here. So we're going to go to file, export LAS, um, colorized. So if you would like your data set colorized, all you have to do is select colorized. Uh, for time purposes, I'm going to leave it on no color. Um, and then export as. Uh, we're going to do LAZ. It will still give you the LAS, but obviously the LAZ, it's lossless compression. So if you're uploading to the cloud or 
um, sending to anybody. Obviously, you want the LAZ. Um, so we're done here. We're going to click export file and it's going to go ahead and save. Um, and then I will show you where it saves the files. Compression finished. Okay. So we're going to pull back up our, um, inside our main recipe folder, there is now a clouds folder and, uh, here's the LAS and LAZ. Um, so very simple workflow guys. Um, if you got any questions, leave them down below. Um, really appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.